Yo, call me Sparky Zero, the way you look like Robert De Niro. Hey, everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the Game Skits today. And only today, that's right, I get to tell you that I got to play some Dragon Ball Sparky Zero. I'm very excited to show you some of the footage I got, some of the stuff they talked to us about, and get into all of that. All right, so Dragon Ball Spark X Zero. We got to play it at Summer Games. So we got about 30, 40 minutes with it, uh, which was first shown to us by presentation. The first part of it, of our showcase, was a presentation where they talked to us about a bit of the, you know, stuff that's going to be in the game. So one main thing that's going to be in the game that's really cool is custom battles. And this is sort of like they watched the Three Idiots videos by Rhymestown Dot on the others, and they were like, let's just make it a mode. Because the idea here with custom battle is you can make these scenarios, right? So you can pick, you know, two or three characters that'll be on a team together. You can choose, like, their voice line for being out of the map. You can pick the win condition for the fight. You can pick which planet you're going to be in. This is going to be massive for people like me, you know, who stream and, and have a lot of viewers that are going to make cool scenarios. And I think it's just going to be a cool way to challenge yourself because I think you can make these scenarios and you can post them online for people to try. So it's going to be a cool way for people that maybe don't want to always just go online do matches and just do these custom scenarios people are making you can even title the scenarios you can choose where they are and everything like you could potentially make your own for example world tournament right where you you i don't know you want to make a new universe of power tournament and you make it certain characters and it's, it's like i think that is really sick and i think that's going to be a sick idea for you know people that just want to play alone or people like me that of course are going to make content and have their viewers make me suffer giving me enemies that have you know 5 billion health and then giving me like 10 HP. So custom battles are going to be sick. Now, the next thing they talked to us about is the story mode, right? The what if story mode that they showed a bit of in the Summer Games Fest trailer. They gave us a bit of a better look at it. And I got to say, this is the part of the game that I was a little bit let down by, right? So the way it works is it does work like the original uh, Tenkaichi games or some of them, where instead of one big story where you're going, you know, from beginning to end, uh, it's going to be from eight character perspectives. I don't know all the eight characters, but there's going to be eight different campaigns you can basically go through. Goku's, I'm assuming it's going to be like Goku, Gohan, Trunks, maybe Vegeta, maybe one of the villains. Like, I, I assume it's going to be something like that. But regardless, right? Uh, they go into that and they start us off with Goku's mission. Now, they showed us in this uh, story thing, you know, the what if first path where you can choose, you know, when Raditz takes go on, you can choose, hey, do you want to go with Piccolo or do you want to go at it uh, alone? If you choose to go at it alone, Krillin's going to join you and that's going to give you an entirely different scenario. And then they show us the fight and the fights are very much Tenkaichi in the sense of obviously you're seeing the gameplay here when you're fighting Raditz. You know, they stop at some point when you get to a certain amount of HP. To continue the story stuff but i gotta say just seeing that right away i felt that childhood nostalgia right but i do gotta say right my one flaw slash issue and, and i'm sure you're gonna tell from looking at the footage is the campaign isn't all cutscenes, right you could see that sometimes it's like a frame of the character floating with text boxes and even like in cutscenes, some of the movement is awkward like you can you can tell it's a game that doesn't want to be dragon ball z kakura right you have dragon ball z kakura for crazy animations and fully fledged cutscenes and i guess because that exists they're like all right for this let's just focus on the dialogue of the what if scenarios and try to just make it easier for ourselves so that was the one disappointing thing i will say uh, on that regard but again regardless you're playing tenkaichi for one reason one reason only and that's the game plan man i didn't really play the fighters campaign either i just want to go online do fights with friends and all that stuff and of course we gotta talk about that which i think to me is the biggest and most important part which is versus right versus 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 they did give us a few tidbits that one yes there's going to be online there's going to be ranked there is going to be local multiplayer because i know a lot of people were complaining that there might not have been so there is going to be local multiplayer split screen but the one thing about it is it's only in the hyperbolic time chamber you can tell it's something that they were like okay a lot of people want local we can't do it because we can't render all these areas exploding twice on screen so Let's just have them do it in a map where nothing happens. So you could do local, but it'll only be hyperbolic time chamber. To be honest, it's 2024. 90, I would say 95% of people are going to be playing this game online, but it's nice to have local for obviously that old school feel. Now, of course, we got to talk about the game itself, the gameplay, the, the battles, the, the versus stuff. Man, let me tell you, bro, they cooked, right? This is fire. It is exactly what you expect. Now, it took me a while to get used to the control, so sadly... My gameplay isn't the best. They did provide us some footage uh, from their side that is obviously a little bit better because they know the controls. But yeah, the beginning, I was you know, sort of jumping around, trying to figure out 
my boost because the game gives you two control schemes. You can have classic. So if you guys, you know, go back to old Tenkaichi games a lot and you want that classic control scheme, you can do that. But they also do have a modern control scheme, which is the one I went for, right? I think they did a good job of, you know, having, you know, so it's RT, X to go forward. And when it comes to modern, what they do is they almost Xenoverse slash Kakarot it, where you hold R2 and you have the list of your specials, right? And so when you press R2, you can choose which one, or is it R1? One of the buttons, basically. You choose a button to basically choose which special you want to do. So I think that's going to be the one a lot of people end up going with, just because importing specific combos while cool and satisfying is probably going to be something that a lot of modern people just would be like, yo, I just want to do the cool thing, right? So that's probably going to be the case there. But man, how does it feel? I'm sure a lot of people's question is like, how does it feel? It feels good, dude. Like, it, it feels... I don't want to explain it. It feels like an old school game that I'm playing in a modern scenario, right? Like, that environments look really cool. The, the, the attacks feel weighty to them. I played a few different characters. I played as Goku. I played as Future Trunks. I played as Vegeta. I was trying to get a feel of a lot of the characters. And I got to say, man, their moves and specials... Like, when, dude, when you do the specials and the camera angles zoom in and everything, it looks fantastic there's even you know one of those shots um from a fight with gogeta where you know where you could actually be goku and if you have vegeta on your team they actually fuse together and you see the whole fusion animation looks amazing when i did trunks is future trunks special ability at the end he does you know the spirit sword move from super and that's awesome also they did say that story for the first time is going to go up to end of super which is the first time they've ever done that so that's gonna be really cool but yeah no uh playing the different moves you are obviously here to do cool shit it, it's really weird right because you play a game like this and you're sort of i don't know i feel like i've played kakarot so much that i was expecting going in super flashy you know going left and right doing crazy speeds teleporting but obviously it's still a game that you know is 1v1 and it's meant for you to have you know back and forth with a player and obviously when it comes to something like this, I was playing against a really easy CPU. So I wasn't really able to experience the game the way you really will experience it, right? Because yeah, the CPU was dodging a few times, but for the most part, I was like attacking, 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 doing my Kamehameha's, doing my Key Blast and all that stuff. And it was fairly simple to get into, right? You do your L1 or L2 to ascend and descend. You can, you know, fast flash to them. You could teleport left and right. And honestly, the camera was really good too. I was worried when we first saw the gameplay demo a few months back that the camera angle was going to be too shaky, but they did a pretty good job with the camera making it work pretty well in combat and i had no issue with it right and obviously the way you're gonna end up doing your ultimate special attack is you're gonna charge r2 until the skies get dark and you're gonna see you get your sparking which is like your ultimate finisher so typically you're gonna probably want to combo into it so you're gonna hit hit then use r2 play, pick your ultimate and boom you go into it. it looks crazy it's sick and each characters have like special ones versus obviously like their ultimate one and god i just gotta say man you're, you're looking at some of these the animations are so good like that's my thing about the game that stood out the most the animations are so sick i will say right uh that in this demo i will say i do think there needs to be a bit more polish i don't know how old this build is it might be you know a month or two but i feel like sometimes the voice lines pulled up a little too late right or that they weren't like fully in sync or sometimes some of the animations felt a little awkward you know when they talk to each other but for the most part, I feel like everything is done. You know, I know there's some, some moments in the trailers where some things don't look up to stuff or whatever, but I don't think that's the point. I mean, it's a game where when you're playing it, it looks sick and it feels dope, right? But obviously, like I said, I feel like there's some areas of pause there. We can't even show you the character select screen uh, because I don't think it's done yet. So they're going to show that later on. But yeah, for the most part, I thought, thought it was fucking sick, dude. Like, I, that, that's what made me so happy right as i was playing it and i was like dude I, I feel like a kid again you know i'm jumping around i'm teleporting i'm doing my hits i'm using my key blast i'm using my charge ups and like i said i wasn't able to try any crazy techs because i was you know i had 30 minutes i was trying my best to just play the game as much as i could right and obviously i got access i got to try android 17 he was really fun you know he's super 17 but when i got to play it, so that was really dope goku felt awesome obviously you know you can tell a lot of the budget goes to, you know, the main characters. And you can tell, right? Because I was playing Goku and he looked fantastic. He played incredibly well. He was super fun. I didn't get to do his ultimate, but alas, like it's just it, playing the character was dope. And you're also able to do team fights. So you could do, you know, 
3v3s. And also, what's really cool about this game is you can swap characters in the middle of a match. So you can, you know, as soon as, soon as the top meter uh, fills up, you can swap to a different character. You have, I think, up to three other characters on your team. So you'd be four playable characters in a find. That's awesome, right? That's going to lead to so many cool scenarios. And I feel like you could do some cool shit where you go on, on Parsec or something and you see you, everyone you die, your friend takes over the controller. And I don't know, you can do some cool stuff with that. I think that's going to be really sick with that. And I just, man, I, I, it, it's such a hard game to talk about because it is quite literally what you expect and what you see, you know, and, and everything from the specials, how it attacks you and everything. And I just, I need more time with it, right? Because like I said, 30 minutes is not enough to adequate, adequate enough yourself to some of the moves. Cause you obviously, you know, you have stuff like the Sonic Sway, you can dodge a lot. You can revert your key buzzer. I know you can parry. Like if someone's comboing you, I feel like when they teleport, you're able to parry. If you time that, I saw someone do that once in there. So there's gonna, it's one of those games where obviously there are some characters stronger than others. Like I, I think my last fight I, I fought against Mr. Saiyan and I just cooked him, right? And I, I think while it's a game that's going to have some balance, it's definitely a game that's meant to be like, all right, I'm playing my overpowered character uh, and you're not. Sadly, Videl was not in this build and Gotenks wasn't, or some of my characters were not in there, but I got to play the ones I, I, I liked and man, I just, I felt like they cooked and you got to play through different areas. So they have Planet Namek in there. Uh, they had, you know, the Rocky Canyon. They had Supreme Kai's Planet. They had like a good variety of areas in there. And that's probably not even the final count. But for the most part, man, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is exactly what you've seen. And it feels really good. I, I will say when you start it, unless, you know, you're a pro at, you know, Spar or Tenkaichi, it's going to be a little difficult to just get into and do cool shit right away. There is a learning curve it's sort of like when you play those naruto storm games where yeah you can just theoretically run up and mash a but i feel like this is a game that is going to you know hit harder once you know how to ascend properly descend properly sway left and right mash you know do your do your attacks so you know you're clashing with somebody do the beam clashes like i didn't get that stuff because obviously like i said i had a bad cpu against me but when you get into the full swing of what the game could be like, it's going to be awesome. Like I said, I think the game could use a bit more polish, but I do think for the most part, that's just kind of how the game is. You know, not every character can look insane because it's a game with, you know, 100 plus characters, right? And obviously they have certain rigs for certain characters to make everything work. So not everything can look as unique as, you know, how much time is put into a singular character of a fighting game with 24 characters. But... You can just tell from the hair. I love how the hair flows, by the way. How the charging feels, how the night sky changes, everything. It's just, it's so good, dude. Like, it, it, it feels good. It feels hype. And that's what's most important to me with a game like this. Is it is hype. It looks hype. The environments are sick. Go, I played a Super Saiyan 3 Goku. He was fired. Did the sick Dragon Fist move over here. But I, I don't know. I was losing it over playing his trucks. He was just so sick to me. Gogeta felt so sick. It's just, they were so many cool animations in there that was so i play and of course i'm sure you guys are going to be excited when you guys get to play it to what we got what three months to go we're almost in this i i just i can't wait so guys let me know what you think of what i've shown you today let me know if you're excited for more sparking zero what else you would like me to cover about it talk about it and everything of course guys i love you thank you for watching i'll see you all next time peace out